Just like Michelangelo into the blue on heavenly wings. Cargo hand bones don't take off no smoke, no mirror, no strings. I can't take off these dark shades. I can only say how it's too beautiful. Our town, our town on TV, our town. You and me Upside down Hanging out of an airplane Welcome to this segment of Our Town. We're so excited today because we're down to John McGinnis Auctioneers and we'll be having a chance to take a look at some of the memorabilia with Dave Powers and JFKs. So let's get started. Hi, we're here with uh, Dan Meter, and he's going to give us some uh, rundowns of the auction today. Hi, nice to be with you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yes, we're right downtown Amesbury, and we have a most unbelievable collection. What we have is the uh, personal effects of John F. Kennedy's best friend and personal assistant while he was in the White House, uh, David Powers. He was uh, a friend of John F. Kennedy. Uh, actually, uh, Jack Kennedy at the time in 1946 was uh, told that he needed to seek out Dave Powers in order to try to win a seat in the House of Representatives here in Massachusetts. Yep. Uh, he found him, knocked on his door, and to make a long story short, changed his persuasion and he stuck with Jack Kennedy right up till that fateful day in Dallas. Uh, Dave was actually in the motorcade in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. He was in the Secret Service car right behind the president, uh, directly behind the president. He actually took uh, Jack Kennedy while he was still alive and brought him into the, rushed him into the operating room on the stretcher. Uh, it, he was a very, very, very close personal friend. To it's even harder for him on both, right? Being oh yeah, no, it was, it was, friend. it was very uh, difficult. Uh, actually, uh, he sat with Jackie on Air Force One uh, on the way back to Washington that night with Jackie, and Jackie said to Dave, well, "What are you going to do now?" Because she knew, you know, she, she knew how close this relationship yeah. was, and his whole life was devoted to the president. Uh, so it was quite a shock. Uh, as it was, he did stay on with Lyndon Johnson for a year, mm -hmm. uh, and then Bobby Kennedy had asked him to uh, start uh, amassing a collection and amassing uh, uh, the knowledge and the whereabouts to uh, uh, procure uh, funds for a museum in uh, President Kennedy's honor, which is now known as the, the, the Kennedy, yeah. yeah, right in Dorchester. Um, so he was the first curator, and he uh, retired in 1994. So he held that position for about 30 years, uh, and he through the years donated hundreds if not thousands of things to the JFK library and the family still does do here also. oh yeah the family's donating stuff right up to this day but there was so much stuff and what we have is basically the catalyst of the uh, somebody moving she, the, Dave's wife was getting older she was moving on in years and they decided the house was too big and she was going to move into and a small quarter in 1998 was it? yes he died in 1998 and she continued to live in the house till just over a year ago uh, his wife Joe 
So uh, the kids are, you know, adults now, and they have their own uh, uh, homes and that kind of thing. So they had never really gone through the belongings of the, the father. You know, they just assumed that everything was over at the JFK library. Uh, they knew things that were hanging on the wall and little keepsakes, things that were mm-hmm. out and about the house, but they didn't realize what he had in boxes and file boxes and briefcases and uh, storage uh, cabinets. And it was full. It was all kinds of, I mean, we this basically have thousands and thousands and thousands of items uh, that we've boiled down into 723 lots. So one lot might have one thing, but another lot might have 20 or 30 things. And what we've done is try to tell us the story and we've done it in a chronological format so that you can follow along from the earliest years of JFK and the relationship with Dave Powers through the presidential years into the post assassination because Dave remained close with the entire family there's about 60 notes from Jackie Kennedy in the sale and a number of them from John John from Caroline from Bobby from Ted from Ethel all members of the Kennedy family he was very very close he was the closest thing to uh, uh, a brother that uh, uh, Jack Kennedy could have had besides his own brother and it was always said that uh, uh, President Kennedy had two best friends one was Bobby his brother and the other one was Dave Powers so we're very fortunate to get this collection in Amesbury Massachusetts yeah. this is this is a this is a major major auction oh, yes. and Amesbury is uh, on the world stage with this because we have had uh, news reporters cameramen like yourself from all over the world that have come and wanted to talk and uh, you know relate this story to everywhere in the world so, so we're a busy a, guy <laughs> yeah we've become a it's been a quite a quite an adventure this this sale and yeah. it, it, Amesbury's a hub that's that's the way you can look at it, because when we have an auction here in Amesbury, it's not only the people in Amesbury that can bid, it's anybody in the world. Okay, we have yeah. the facility through the computer technology that we have that any one of your viewers could certainly come, but anyone in the world can actually bid right from the comfort of their own home. They can bid on the computer right in their bedroom, their, their, their living room, wherever, and be live bidding. La- laptop bidding, year. right? Exactly, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it makes Amesbury you know, a worldwide player. Now, do you expect a lot of people bidding over the phone? Uh, we will have, yes, we, we allow phone bidding. Yeah. So if, if it's certain people that really want to go after They're a specific that item, that, well, we call them. They, oh. they have to reserve a line ahead of time. They have to call us and let us know what they're all about and what, inter- what yeah. lots they're interested in. So then they do that, and then we call them as the items are progressing. We call them a few minutes ahead of time. And they, they uh, are, are allowed to bid whatever they want. They yeah, can yeah. decide what they want to bid that moment. Uh, we also take left bids. You're getting, you know, so. you're getting me excited. You're listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It's going to be a it very. Is. It's going to be an emotional day. It'll oh, be yeah. a very emotional yeah. day because we've done it chronologically. So you know, your audience knows certain moments in your life that you never forget. Right. And there's certainly many of them within the Kennedy legacy. So those things will be stand foremost. But what we've done here is we've incorporated other dates, other things, and it shows you how close in relationship to oh, yeah, time yeah. these things actually happen you know so you can see the progression as it goes along most of the people that watch my show mm-hmm. are, are elderly mm-hmm. not all the time but they're elderly so they're from that time sure. era so they'll, sure. they'll well, be they able to relate it. they lived it they know what they yeah, felt yeah, like at right home going exactly and when I ever went into the powers home and I open up these things they were I was there for hours and hours and hours and we're going through the things and you open up one thing there was no sense of order and you would just see some pictures and then you'd see something else in a book and this and that yeah, yeah. and then some of them we have for instance Dave Powers own schedule that was put out by the, the White House staff that they had to follow for the, the, the events it was a two-day trip to, oh, da- yeah, to, to Texas Dallas, they yeah. went to San Antonio and then they were going to Dallas so we have his actual schedule and he annotated it it's minute by minute wow. exactly what happened throughout the course of the day and it's ursha i mean you you just look you read this and you know you get chills if because you can it shows read it without tearing up yeah. well it was I, I a very <laughs> difficult proposition it was yeah. I'm, I'm reading it and and i had goosebumps and you know i i'm looking at it and it gets down to 12:30 and that's when the three shots rang out and yeah. he says 12:30 my president is shot, 12.30. Oh, wow. My president is dead at 1 o'clock. He writes it in such a personal detail that you can't help but feel the emotion. Oh, and yeah. this is 50 years later, yeah, yeah. and you still get chills. I mean, that's how close this... This man was literally feet away when it all happened. He was taking a, a, a movie of the uh, of the, the, the motorcade okay, as it was yeah. going along. His job was... To, get the emotion, the reactions of the crowds as they went along. So he would be searching things out, seeing how deep the crowds were, if they were positive, if they had positive signs, negative signs, because he relayed back all of that to the president. Yeah, so he was like, manager, yeah, right? well, yeah, he, he, was, he was basically giving the people their voice. He right. would tell the president, this is what I saw. 
yeah. from the people's standpoint. And, yeah. and that that's, shows you the closeness. And I think that's why Dave Powers himself would be happy that we're here in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Because he was from Massachusetts, yeah. he, was a, he was a person of the people, and I think he would be happy to know that some of his possessions would be nice and a great addition to some families 50 years after the fact and to keep and that really legacy appreciate alive. still also yeah. Yeah. because he he was devoted to the the JFK library and yeah. he gave so much to them now is a chance for the public to actually own a piece of this history Oh, this is amazing, and I want to thank you. Well, before I say thank you, I want to say you must really like your job. Oh, it's not a job. It's not a job. It's, it's a not a job. Yeah, no, it's 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 in your blood. You know, for me, it's it's just something that uh, uh, there's nothing better than going through an attic, a cellar, yeah. a basement, and just discovering things that haven't been touched in a long time. Because people have things all in their houses, and they don't realize what they have. Sometimes the things that they have out invisible, sure, they might think they're valuable, but sometimes it's the things that are put away, and they might not have any idea. The Powers family, for instance, this was there every day life. They lived this and they didn't look at it from the standpoint of a monetary value. Yeah. They were looking at it as, yeah, this was this day, that was that day. You know, they lived it, you know. You kind of had to set up like a campaign office too. I know. So when you come That's in, you get that field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we good did job. the windows up. I put the Kennedy posters and set up all the bunting and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So it's, it's quite an event for Amesbury and we're happy to be here to be able to do it. And I want to thank him for his time because it's such a busy, hectic it's okay. thing going on. We're, we're no doing this a little bit early before the actual auction so that we can get our time in. And I just want to thank the viewers and get a chance to enjoy what you're seeing here because it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing and, and they've got a good gift here. So that I want to thank you very, very true. much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. That's it for this segment, on to the next segment.
Thank you.
Let's go, you gotta. Just like Michelangelo into the blue on heavenly wings. Cargo hand bones don't take off no smoke, no mirror, no strings. I can't take off these dark shades. I can only say how it's too beautiful. Our town, our town on TV, our town. You and me Upside down Hanging out of an airplane 